This is Anime Out of Context, a comedy review podcast hosted by a weeb of the highest order alongside a cynical man who knows nothing about anime. Our show features spoilers, explicit language, and poor fact-checking. Neither of our hosts are experts on any topic and none of their opinions should be taken as fact. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. To anime out of context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And I find a time-traveling DeLorean, but instead of going back in time and playing with my Freudian and Oedipal complexes, I instead go back and prevent anime from ever existing. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Remington, if you did that, we wouldn't exist. That's fine. That's I. I will. <laughs> I will take one for the team. I will cease to exist to prevent all anime from ever existing. It, it's a large price, but I'm willing to pay it. God damn it! That just means that the world will be saved from two evils. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Two evils. You and anime, but also me. Why do I have to go in this? Uh, there. I'm sorry. There has to be some collateral. <laughs> Well, thanks, Spock. <laughs> Needs of the many, my ass. All right, fine so, fine. so this week is a weird week, Sean, because I'm still mostly in the dark, but I do know one very small thing about this week. That is true, because, Remington, we're about to do something that we've never done on this show before. We're about to go on a field trip! Yeah, <laughs> we're going to uh, pile up in our magic school bus and go on a grand adventure. And so, uh, so Miss Frizzle has decided, uh, Miss Frizzle Rollins has decided to, to take me, uh, to, to a movie theater. We're going out on a hot date tonight to, to see something that I've, I've seen it hyped up a lot, but I don't know, I don't know the title. I don't know the plot. I don't know anything about it, but I'm pretty sure this has been like hyped up a lot in our discord. A lot of people have been saying, I got tickets for tonight. I'm going to see it tonight. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yeah. But it's generated a lot of hype. As soon as I start getting into what this is, you'll understand. Uh, but a slight asterisk, uh, I try to pride myself on watching as much of an anime as possible beforehand. But with this one, it's a bit tricky because it's only in theaters right now, and I'm broke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, our, our fans can perfectly understand why you have not seen it yet and why you are only seeing it for the first time with me, which will be a fun experience. Yeah, no, so uh, it'll be... I mean, whenever have weebs been irrationally angry about minute details? <laughs> Fair enough. But honestly, I feel like I'm still qualified to introduce this show to you because I know a decent amount about uh, the uh, where it comes from as well as... The fact that we've covered this uh, this uh, type of show before. Ooh, okay. Uh, this type of show could could be anything. Could mean that we're do doing a, a sequel in theaters. It could mean we're doing something that's uh, not quite a sequel, but like is basically a sequel. Uh, or it could mean we're just doing like a fucking harem anime in theaters, which would be an oof. <laughs> oh no you gotta see big titties on the big screen oh i would love that i know you would sean oh man hey at least i'm honest <laughs> <laughs> uh but no uh so what we're doing today remington is we're going to go and see a film that is simply titled weathering with you weathering with you all right or uh tenki no ko all right, uh, so all I've deduced from that is it doesn't seem like it's a a, uh, a novel title. It doesn't seem like it's a, it's a, a short novel title because uh, it's way too short for that. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a movie, obviously. Oh, yeah. We're not just going to a theater to watch a TV show. <laughs> Thank goodness. Which is a thing that people do sometimes, apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, but no, no, uh, Weathering With You, it is a uh, Makoto Shinkai film. Which... But of course. Okay, for some perspective. Uh, Remington, one of your favorite things we've ever covered on this show was a film. Ooh. A film simply titled, uh, Kimi no Nawa, or Your Name. Oh! Makoto Shinkai is the man who directed that film and many others. Hell uh, yeah! I remember distinctly back, uh, when we made that episode, I attributed it to Kyo Annie and realized my res my mistake post-recording and was very angry at myself. <laughs> As were everybody who sent me messages. Yes, I know I'm an idiot. <laughs> but no, Makoto Shinkai... Uh, is a fantastic director uh, and scriptwriter, if I'm not mistaken, that made all these amazing, fantastic uh, movies, and they all have their own flavor and themes to them. He's kind of like a modern Ghibli in a lot of ways. Okay, so here's 
immediately I am far more optimistic than I should be. In fact, I've had almost like I, I've had about a month of, of just solid optimism and happiness, which is terrifying because our anniversary is, is next week. And I don't I feel like it's the calm before the tremendous storm. But uh, nonetheless, ignoring that, I, I, I'm super excited. What I here's what I'm hoping to get from this. OK. Um, I'm hoping one to get absolutely beautiful scenes. Your name was absolutely stunning. Visually, it was ridiculous. Uh, and you know, it wasn't even just beautiful visually. It was, it was beautiful both with the sounds and with the ideas, with the execution. I also want to see some great humanity from it because your name, it was super touching. It had a lot of heart, a lot of humanity. And that's what I would hope to find in in this in this movie as well those are like some of the most important details that i remember vividly from your name and they're the ones that i'm so hoping can maintain themselves in this well let me just tell you right now i'm looking at the poster it's pretty fucking beautiful man ah oh, that's I, I remember after after seeing your name uh, i was scrolling through reddit right and i i saw uh, the, this post talking about this really clever design of of a poster, and I clicked on it, and it was this beautiful, beautiful poster, uh, and it was it was absolutely tremendous. And I and then I was like, oh, that's your name, uh, because your name was just so good. And so I, I'm confident that if, if it seems to look beautiful in the poster, I'm confident it'll follow through on that. Yeah, no, Shinkai films have always been gorgeous to a massive extent. And uh, so, a bit of background about this film specifically. It actually did. It actually came out last year. Okay. Yeah, okay. it came out last year in the middle of July, uh, twenty nineteen. Uh, but because you know it's an anime movie and not like a tie into a popular dubbed anime series like your Yu Gi Ohs or your Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, it's not very common for them to be uh ported over here, and if they do, it's usually only for one or two days, uh, for special showings in special theaters and special locations. Like, it's not a very common thing to get these, like, big high-fidelity anime features on our side of the pond. Uh, but in this case, not only uh, are we getting multiple opportunities to watch this movie in theaters, but it seems like, at least for our local area, every other theater has multiple showings every day for the past week now. Oh, that that's delightful. Uh, uh, Both subbed and dubbed. Uh, wow, that I was not expecting. Yeah, no, so that would explain part of the delay, but also the fact that we get both options— for people who like the original and people who are okay with dubs and prefer dubs. Uh, granted, don't know what we're going to be, which version we're going to be seeing tonight because it does not have it listed on the theater we're going to. <laughs> well, well, we will, we'll just see. We'll wing it like we do so much else in our life. This is a very improvisational podcast and I'm sure people appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Appreciation. That's the word. Yeah. Uh, well, so Sean, uh, by the time people can listen to this, is it probably too late for them to go watch it in theaters? Probably. <laughs> probably. Perfect. It's been out for about like six or seven days now, and I was amazed that it got more. Originally, it was only going to have two showings at our Which local theater. Which, for, for, for those listening, means that like th three weeks ago, almost? Maybe four. Uh, yeah, like half a month plus Middle ago. of January. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's when we are going to watch it. We got a buffer now. Uh, <laughs> Which, that little peek behind the screen. Yeah, yeah, just part the kimono a little bit. <laughs> That's a phrase. I I don't think that is. Oh, I'm sure it has to be. <laughs> Google, just Google part the kimono. I really don't want to Google part the kimono. I'm sure it's a common phrase. I... You know, you just got to part the kimono and there it is. There something is. There's my dragon tail meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always happy to see that, Remington. It's nutritious, delicious, and slightly poisonous. Uh, all right. Well, is, is there anything else that, that you feel like we, we need to go over? Obviously, we're in a, a uncharted territory with you having not seen it, obviously, uh, and us going to see it together for the first time, which is going to be weird and different and It's going to be romantic as well, and I'm excited uh, it's for It's going to be so nice. Like, I just, mm, I, I we're going to share popcorn. We're going to have two straws and a single milkshake. It's going to be very cute. And and my girlfriend was invited, uh, which if she comes, it'll just make it more, uh, uh, it'll make it awkward for her, but we, we're we, committed we to can, the bit. We can get her a third straw, but it's only going to be one of the little tiny kitty ones, and as soon as she can't reach <laughs> anything with it, then it's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that that's, who knows? Maybe we'll just uh, do it do it without her, uh, as as we've been doing for a long time now, Sean. 
Have fun with that, Dylan. I could, would you like some more mouth sounds to edit? Oh God! Uh, just just wait till my girlfriend figures out about our our daughter Samantha. And yeah, our 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 metaphorical uh, uh, daughter that just kind of into existence. I don't know. I don't know how she she just kind of well, she's there. Uh, granted, I think the Umarachan pillow is just kind of. Yeah, like you're once again, you're acknowledging something that that they cannot see. But right beside me, there's a Numara Chan pillow. It was given to me uh, when Sean was given a new, uh, uh, a Daki Makra, one of many that he owns. I, I do not own many. I only own one, and I'm desperately trying to hide it. <laughs> Whatever you say, Sean. I'm sure all of the listeners believe you just as much as I do, which is a lot. Uh, Probably. The fact that you've brought this up specifically means that people are going to be asking me, well, which character is it? And how lewd is it? And I don't want to answer Go harass questions. Sean to, to find out all about it. I don't want to. <laughs> it's gross. So, uh, Sean, is there anything else that we need to talk about specifically for the movie? Or amazingly, are we ready to go? I mean, I can give you a synopsis of the plot, or would you rather just go in blind like I'm about to? I don't know. I feel like because it's a theatrical experience... Going in blind is is probably for the best. If they're interested in looking at the synopsis, that'll be really easy for them to find. Uh, but going in blind seems like an interesting experience. I'm not sure what exactly to to expect given the details, but I, I'm very optimistic. I think this will be interesting. It will also be my first ever anime movie in theaters, which will be weird as shit. Yeah, you're going to be surrounded by all kinds of weebs. It'll be great. Oh, God. Oh, no. All right, let's... Yeah, well, let's just go in blind. Uh, if you guys think that you should see this and you have the opportunity to see it, then go see it. Trust me on this. You will enjoy it. Uh, and without further ado, let's go watch. We are back after seeing the hit 2019 film, Weathering With You. And Remington, this was a strange experience for the both of us. Uh, yeah, one, because this was, I think, the first time we've just w watched it for the first time together. Uh, and second, watching it in a theater was real interesting. Yeah, no, seeing all of those beautiful colors and animation on the big screen was kind of a nice change of pace, and oh my god, what a pretty movie. It's insanely beautiful. Before we get too much in-depth, I, I would recommend that if you haven't seen it, th that maybe you want to skip this and wait until you're able to see it, which might be a little while, but that's okay. It'll be worth the wait. Because we will be dealing with with a, a decent handful of spoilers out here. It's not really possible to not have spoilers when we're dealing with, you know, a film. I mean, it's a longer yeah. film, but it's still a film. Yeah, and while I think it still can be very fascinating, and this would still be a solid movie, even if it is spoiled a bit, I still would recommend going into it more or less blind. Uh, like we did, which was a lovely change. Uh, but... Remington, let's get into it. Weathering with you. Uh, this second half is going to be a bit interesting because it's going to be a conversation between uh, us specifically because we probably have about the same opinions after our first viewing. Yeah, I, I think there's going to definitely be a lot of overlap. Yeah, so I let's get started then uh, with the most obvious thing. This movie is fucking gorgeous. Oh, it's so, so, so beautiful, uh, which you 100% you expect... Uh, th this one, the, what what I love about it, not only do you get the, the beautiful things of nature, right, but especially you get so much beauty coming from the cityscape itself. It was like the magic of your first time seeing New York City is what it reminded me of. Like, the first time I ever went to the Big Apple, it was dark and I was flying overhead and I was just, like, blown away by how beautiful it was in person. I got that exact same feeling while watching this movie multiple times. Oh, yeah, and then that combined with the rainy atmosphere, which, Sean, you know I'm a whore for rain. Rain is the single greatest weather that exists in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, as soon as I realized that this movie would have nothing but rain in it, I knew that this would be, like, your favorite movie of all time. Rain makes me so goddamn giddy. Rain, it, it's above, like, Moe bullshit and child murder, to give our listeners an idea. So, already super in love, and that definitely, they leaned in to the aesthetic with that they utilized that to its fullest so beautiful so tremendous 
just everything we say, just add it at the end. And it's beautiful because every single scene is tremendous. Much better than uh, in my pants game. I like to play with books. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, much, much better than that one. Or the in your pants game you play with me when it all ends and we turn the microphone off and I'm trapped in the basement. Would oh. you like some lotion, Rem? <laughs> God damn it rubs it on the skin until it gets the hose again. Oh, uh, but uh, it, immediately it, it starts off. And it gives you a, a basic idea. We get a little bit of narration, and we're told that, that, like, it started the day that it changed everything, that they saw reality, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and, and it's, it's quite, very surreal. Yeah, surreal and enigmatic. You, you aren't quite sure where it's going, where it's at. You know that it's raining a lot, and you're quickly shown that a girl got magic. Yeah. And you don't completely understand it. But she's able to to make the rain go up and for the sun to come out. And that that's all you know. Which, that's all you need to know, really. It's a good example of a soft magic system that doesn't really have much, uh, like, downsides to it. Yeah, I mean, it makes, it, it makes sense. Uh, I, I'm not even, I mean, it's not even that much of a soft magic system. If It might be a harder magic system, but, like with one or two rules to it. Uh, it's very yeah. simple. It's very simple and it works. Uh, and I, th- magic like this, it works best when it's obviously metaphorical and this definitely is. Uh, the, the metaphors in this movie are everywhere. Yeah, you can't walk, much like walking in the rain, you can't get out there without being just drenched in metaphor. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, then we're shown uh, our, our main our main boy, yep. who has been uh, narrating it with us. Uh, I, I'm going to get both of their names mixed up. I know that they start both start with H's. That they do. Uh, his name is Hodaka. 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 Yeah, we'll go that. Uh, so uh, Hodaka, we're introduced to him, and uh, he, he, he's, he's running away. Uh, and so he, he goes to Tokyo and he's a little bit scared, a little bit nervous. He's trying to figure out if he can get a job somewhere so he can make some money, but he doesn't have a student ID because he's running away. And so he's stuck in a big city, nowhere really to go, trying to find resources, struggling to do so. And, uh, and, and just really down on his luck. Uh, he, he finds some hope by, uh, at one point they're at McDonald's. And well, and also just as an interjection, as they're at McDonald's, it's not like Whack Donald's, Mac Donald's, Wick Donald's. It's a McDonald's. It's a it's a straight up McDonald's. It's product placement. <laughs> but I'll be honest, this is the first time I've ever been horny for a Big Mac. <laughs> the Big Mac does look great. Uh, there's also like product placement for Yahoo, most prominently, which, which is, is fine and hilarious. <laughs> it's, it, it's unfortunate that the product placement came across more as a joke than as like an advertisement. I think that's fine. Uh, Honestly, <laughs> uh, and there were there were a few other moments like that, which is fine. You do what you got to do, especially when you gotta you gotta make that money so that you can make it look nice and beautiful. Uh, but he he goes to like McDonald's, and uh, a worker there gives him a free Big Mac, yep. and it and the girl is actually the girl we saw doing super magic stuff. Oh ho ho! How yep. interesting. That would be Hina. Uh, then he he ends up going to a guy who saved him on a boat, uh, and he's like, "Hey, here for a job," <laughs> and <laughs> and it's like, "Cool, all right." So he starts working for him. <laughs> there, there's some some little details there, but that's that's the basics you you, you need yeah, to yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's like a two and a half hour movie, so you know you gotta. You gotta... Yeah, we we gotta trim trim some stuff. I can't even say trim the fat because there's uh, not a really lot of it... fat. Yeah, there, there's stuff that is technically unnecessary, but it builds the tone and the mood and the general beauty. Like, they're not afraid to take a few moments for you to just really sink in everything that's happened just now. Uh, and, and I appreciate that. I admire that. Oh, wow. It's actually only just shy of two hours. Oh, yep. That, that sounds about right. But, yeah, it, this movie does everything really well, honestly, as you would expect from a film like this. It's almost amazing how every single little scene has some kind of purpose uh not to the point where everything is connected in this big conspiracy dartboard but more so to the purpose of establishing the world the characters and the humanity that is contained within oh yeah 100 percent. and as 
as a, he as our main character is introduced to uh a K. I want to say K. K. As it as in the dude. I. Uh, Suga. Suga. Sure. K. Like his full name is Keisuke Suga, but okay. Aww. Okay. See. Uh. So. So our our main character. He meets up with Suga, the guy who saved him, as well as what is presumed by the main character and sort of us as an audience to be his his mistress. Uh, and we're given their characters. That they both have very strong characterization, which is great to see. And we're sort of introduced to this nice little montage. And the montage was very pleasant. It shows immediate growth. Some montages are just there to fill space uh, or, or to just take you from A to B and nothing else. But this montage, it had a journey. It wasn't simply repeating the exact same stuff. It had some motifs, some things just evolving and changing. Solid montage, really builds upon the characters and the relationships. Yeah, like you could actually, you actually felt like you're uh, advancing along with the characters themselves and rooting for them the whole way. Also, eventually, our main character adopts a cat, brings it home, calls it Rain. Cute cat. 10 out of 10 cat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh, God. I'm just remembering the end of the movie. Uh... Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not... That's one spoiler I'm not even going to give. No, uh, that, we there's, can't. We there's can't. a great spoiler with the cat. And, and it's the best thing ever. It, it, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Uh, and, and you're you're not gonna know what's so tremendous about the cat. Some people who have already watched it are like, "What the fuck are they talking about with the cat?" Oh, they know. They know. <laughs> if they have any taste, they know what's so great about the cat at the end. <laughs> like, my God, it's one it's of not the... a major plot point or anything, but goddamn, is it good? It's so good. I I burst out laughing in the theater, and the people to our left and right were very upset with me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it, it quickly establishes characters and bonds, and that's something that I think the Weathering With You did some, did tremendously the whole way through, relationships and character building. It had both of those so prominently. All the characters were interesting, even side characters. It wasn't afraid to, to give them value and importance in a lot of moments, which was so nice to see. And so uh, it also established very early on there's a world beyond. There's It really did world building quite well, uh, while also keeping a lot of surreal qualities for for the more mystical and magical side of things, where they, they didn't try to explain it in too much detail, though they did touch upon it sufficiently, I would say. Uh, and it keeps, it sort of does have that Ghibli vibe where it's, the other side isn't fully understandable or comprehensible. It's just fundamentally a little bit off, a little bit weird to us. Uh, but it's presented in such a, a beautiful and remarkable fashion that that is totally fine. Yeah, just a real power of nature theme uh, going through it, which is another big Ghibli thing. Uh, because in a lot of Ghibli films, and I know you've only seen two, uh, but a huge overlapping theme in most of them is the idea of nature being this unstoppable, powerful force that is both beautiful and destructive at the same time. And this definitely holds that same theme very prominently. Like, it's kind of the main plot point if you uh, had to really think about it on a global scale. And and so uh, eventually, eventually our main character, he sent out to search for a sunshine girl. Uh, a, a girl that can can bring about sunshine. It's yeah. a it's a, a very very straightforward name. <laughs> yeah, because uh, in this uh, version of Tokyo, it has been nonstop raining for two and a half to three months at this point, which is so good. Not for a lot of other people though, Rem. You have to realize <sighs> that you're kind of the outlier in this. Not everybody wants flood uh, quality rains constantly. God, n n Noah had it good back then. Is all I'm saying. Thousands of people died in that story. Oh, man, but the rain. That's how I want to go, God damn it! How many dogs died in that story? All but two. Hey, 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 hey. I like to imagine there were only two, and they both got saved. <laughs> Revisionist history, folks. <laughs> Something to be aware of. Uh, but uh, but eventually, the, the find, he finds the sunshine girl. Sure enough, it's the girl we saw earlier. Wow. Uh, and th they end up starting a little business together where she will provide sunshine for other people at, for a modest fee, right? And what I really liked about these next couple scenes, it sort of had a, a Kiki's delivery service vibe where as they're going to help all these people give them some sunshine uh, on, on the days that they needed it, in the places they needed it, 
everyone had different reasons for wanting the sun. Everybody had different motivations. For some, it was for uh, their flea market to be successful. For others, uh, they wanted to just play, right? And you had all of these. My favorite was the guy who, uh, at the horse racing who was like, ah, th- this horse never wins when it's raining. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and there's just such such a wide variety there. And, and things like that, I am always a super huge fan of because being able to see glimpses into other people, being able to just see those moments, look through the keyhole into their humanity, that is all always so beautiful so tremendous it's one of my favorite things that any type of media can do because fundamentally i think that's one of the most valuable experiences that we as people can generally have is is to to peek in and recognize if even just for a moment the the vivid complexity of other lives which is amazing and this film my god this film like i actually really care about the characters even though in terms of characters themselves, they're not exactly new. Once again, I I had similar thoughts about your name, and I'm going to rehash them here. There's very little in Weathering With You that is fundamentally different or or crazily unique, right? It doesn't do a lot that's never been done before. It just does everything very, very well. They stick to a lot of the fundamentals, and they nail it out of the park every single time. Yeah, I almost uh, got cheered up at a couple different scenes throughout the film because I felt for these characters, even though they're kind of some of the same characters I've seen several other times. Yeah, but the way that these characters build the relationships with one another, the way that you can tell that they sincerely care, and the way that you feel that it, it their success isn't necessarily guaranteed at times, that all makes her a captivating story. As well as their definition of success, which I believe is probably the biggest point of the whole film. Oh yeah, and we'll we'll definitely touch on that in, in a few moments because th- that's very interesting. Yeah, but overall, the whole theme of this story seems to be a connection with humanity as well as a connection with the sky itself, which is a very interesting thing to think about because... Yeah, guess what, guys? We got a big blue thing above us that sometimes drops water and ice and all kinds of crap on our heads. You you could definitely uh oh, I I like to consider like the possible uh climate change messages this could be sending. You could easily send a message of like give a shit about the world, dumbass, uh which is a great message. Uh or it could also say Fuck climate change, get bitches. That is another very <laughs> valid interpretation of this movie. I'll explain it later, but that is a that is a genuinely valid interpretation of this movie through a certain lens. Yeah, no, as soon as I was watching it, I was like, oh crap, this is a very similar to a game I played a few years ago. I, I drew the comparisons. We'll talk about that also. Yeah. Uh but but to to continue along with it, so they continue their service, right? Uh, and it's super fascinating to see, but uh, eventually they have to to slow it down significantly after getting a lot of publicity. Uh, we're also introduced to her little brother, uh, who's great, who's just fantastic. Such a good character, my God. They could present it as like a little brother that's a bit jealous or a bit annoying. No, he's neither of these things. First of all, he's super charismatic, the little brother. Uh, he's also rooting for a relationship to happen. Yeah, not at first, which is fair because that's yeah. how siblings react, but literally after they have their little uh, business ventures and gets put in a silly costume because, my God, that was funny. Oh, so good. Uh, he starts rooting for her, and my God, this guy is a little player and a bro, and I love him. And what's what's great, so he, he, has, a, he has a couple, he has, uh, like, a girlfriend and an ex, basically, and that comes into play later in, in one of my favorite moments. Yeah, he's about 12 around. or 13, by the way. Uh, and so we'll we'll get to that also. Uh, at this point, there's also some interest in uh, cops looking for our protagonist because uh, not only is he a runaway, but it seems like he's been caught with maybe having a gun that he found, and that's not a good thing. Especially in Japan, where guns aren't exactly uh, a commonality, you can, could say. Can you imagine that? God bless America. <laughs> I, I, I can't tell if you're for or against the option of being able to get a gun at easy access, and that concerns me. God bless America. That's all I got to say, Sean. Oh, God. 
Uh, it, all I got to say is, are you a goddamn patriot? Uh, but to more relevant <laughs> topics, so the, the, the cops are, are searching for him, uh, trying to, to find him, and uh, it starts causing so, some stress and some issues around. Uh, meanwhile, our sunshine girl is also having her own uh, sets of issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, at one point, she, she gets seemingly blown up into the sky by, by the wind and the storm itself. And, and then sort of starts to be a little bit see-through-ish? Yeah, almost turning to water. Yeah. Um, Which is terrifying, by the way. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a way to go. Uh, and, and so a, a lot of these factors are, are starting to all come together, starting to all merge one into another, right? And uh, uh, eventually we're told that there's a, a, a bit of a prophecy going on uh that that needs to happen and it wasn't shoved down our throats it was just kind of hinted at throughout the entire movie because uh Hodoka and uh his um benefactors uh run a small editing company that essentially provides entertainment through tabloids and like alien stories and things like that which by the way i love that dynamic oh that was really good uh and throughout the entire movie you're getting these little hints from a variety of sources about the idea of the sunshine girl and the ultimate uh power and abilities of them and what it takes to be a sunshine girl yeah, and, and so we, we learn that there's a prophecy that essentially amounts to if you're a sunshine girl, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna get got. Yeah, because turns out in order to uh, deal with horrible traumatic weather that lasts for ages, uh, humans found out that they could sacrifice uh, one individual in exchange for, the, uh, for clear, fair weather. And so, with the the cops searching for them, it causes some some problems for uh for all of our characters. Uh, Suga is trying to regain custody of of his child, and so he can't keep holding on to our protagonist uh, and has to sort of kick him out. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Sunshine Girl and and her brother, they're they get in a little bit of trouble because there's there's no legal guardian with them. Uh, and, and so they're going to, to be kicked out to child services. And so that's an issue. Obviously, already plenty of issues with our main character. And so uh, a lot of it is coming to a head as also the worst storm uh, that's happened thus far is coming. Yeah. And it the way things build up to this storm, because you know that there's something going on with every time she uses her powers. And you know there's a cost to it. But you don't really realize the weight of the cost because it turns out the only cost is just her, yeah. which is the big thing. But it almost makes you feel like the more she uses it, the more the rain will build up and build up and be held back. Mm-hmm. But it <laughs> didn't turn out to be the case. But at the same time, you still feel like that is the parallel that is being drawn. 100 percent. And one thing that I think is important to note upon with her powers and the general premise is that it would be so easy for so many different studios, so many different movies to feel the need to overcomplicate the ideas presented. And I I think one of the reasons why Weathering With You is so successful is that it it doesn't overcomplicate things. It keeps things simple. It keeps things proper. Uh, it, it doesn't, it, it builds enough intrigue and then it explains it. So often when you build so much intrigue, when you pose so many mysteries, you can very rarely answer all of the mysteries with, with an answer that feels satisfactory. Fortunately, because it's relatively simple, the ideas and the plot, it, it makes it so that they're able to nail every moment because it's so straightforward. I, I'm blown away by this movie, Remington. Mostly because Makoto Shinkai knows the way to tug at my poor little heartstrings, my weeby heartstrings. And just the sheer humanity from this movie. Like, your biggest problem with uh, Kiki's Delivery Service was the action scenes at the end. Yeah. I love the action scenes so much in this movie. I, I, I will say, the action in this one... Uh, which doesn't overstay its welcome. It, it's not even, like, absolutely buck wild. But it, I'm, I'm not even sure. Like, the action scenes, that a lot of the time it's, like, action moments. But still, it's super great, super intense. You feel the tension there. 
Uh, which is exactly what you would want in that sort of thing. Which is so good. Like, the balance... What this film is, is it's perfectly balanced is the way I'd like to describe it. Because no matter what your part you're watching, it never overstays its welcome or is never too short. Like, I get just enough of everything I'm looking for from a movie like this. My cute moe moments, my amazing uh, background and art moments, music. My God, the music in this show was oh, fantastic. Yeah. Even the little pop, J-pop interludes were amazing. I'm oh, going to yeah. go look for those songs and add them to my Spotify if Japan will ever release them. <laughs> yeah, Spotify. the soundtrack is is absolutely phenomenal. And what I really enjoy about this show is it, it gives the audience credit. There are a lot of moments that something isn't necessarily explained. It just happens. But it's been decently foreshadowed enough, or at least it makes logical sense enough that you're totally willing to accept it. One of those moments uh, comes with the little brother, and we're about to get to that. But before we're we're nearing to the point where we're getting into really serious spoiler territory, uh, because we're getting into the the final act. Yeah, because so, I mean, if you didn't think that you know the threat of losing someone, <laughs> yeah, is uh, spoilery enough. Wait till you get to this bit. Yeah. So what? Once again. If, if you've not seen it, I'd recommend seeing it before continuing on. It's ultimately your choice. It might take a while, but that is my advice. Because uh, eventually they do find uh, a hotel as they're, they're going through all of this crazy storm and they need to find somewhere to stay. They try many places and they finally find a hotel. Uh, it's a bit expensive. And but, it's also a love hotel, but... Yeah, but it's also super premium. Like, a premium love hotel, which, by the way, Rem, when we're done here... Hey, hey! <laughs> hey how you doing? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Taking me out to a date and then and then trying to take it further. I see how it is. Hey, I'm a man with a message. <laughs> and and so, we, we get some nice wholesome moments... Uh, they they get clean. They have a, a beautiful, expensive feast, uh, and then they sing some karaoke before all winding down in bed. Uh, and and, and it's it's nice and wholesome, and it, it feels just very very pleasant. Which oh god, like I'm a little scatterbrained right now, honestly, Rem. Like I there's just so many wonderful things about this movie. So many wonderful things about everything, the emotional impact and the punches, and, ah, oh God, I'm blown away. But we really got to cover the really big, scary parts of this, don't we? Yep, and wholesome moments cannot last forever, unfortunately. And so as they all go to sleep, uh, everyone has a, a similar kind of dream. And that dream involves involves our sunshine girl disappearing into the sky. Uh, her, her dream is a little bit different, but with, with a similar idea. Mm -hmm. And when they wake up, she is nowhere to be found, and it's a bright, sunshiny day. And a an, uh, bright 77 degrees in the midst of summer. And my fucking heart snapped in two. Yeah, and, and so, uh, obviously, they, they search around the room for her. They need to, to find her. Where, where could she be? But before they can look too much, there's some banging on the door. And sure enough, it's it's cops that we have already been introduced to, already been shown. A they man with an amazing pompadour, by the way. <laughs> oh, great pompadour. Uh, fantastic pompadour. Uh, if anything, I will say that uh, pompadour cops character might be like the most flawed character there because he, he was like the only character I felt lacked a bit of humanity. Like I understood that he, he's the closest to an antagonist as we really get. Uh, but this is like one of the few cases where there just wasn't a lot of nuance. Uh, now I want to emphasize. Hey, I feel like his pompadour was nuanced enough. <laughs> uh, it, it's like, yeah, he's an asshole, but have you seen the pompadour on his head? It makes everything better. Uh, but considering that's one of, genuinely one of my largest critiques, and it's not a very large critique whatsoever, that should give you a, a pretty good idea. No, no, that, I felt about the same, honestly. I loved him, though, still. Oh, no, yeah, I still uh, enjoyed him. I just think that he wasn't, he was the odd man out. He, whereas other characters could be antagonistic, uh, he seemed like one of the only characters to, to not have nuance where he should have had quite a bit of nuance. 
uh, nonetheless, they they take our our protagonist and the little brother uh, away, uh, and they they are ready to ask some questions. Of course, the only focus is finding the Sunshine Girl. Where the fuck did she go? Right. Uh, at, at one point, uh, our, our protagonist Stephen offers, uh, let me go look for her. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll come back to custody. As he is being put into an interrogation room. Yeah. Which is like, that's pretty late in the bargaining phase there, my dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and so, uh, eventually he just books it away. He just, he just finds a, a moment. He runs out of there. Which is amazing that the police force is this incompetent, by yeah, the very, way. Yeah, very, very incompetent police force. I, I think that might be another one of my very mild critiques uh, is, is just how coincidentally smoothly it happened to go. Uh, something I'm willing to, to look over, something I'm willing to ignore, uh, but still I think is a little bit worth noting. Yeah, but... I don't know. I don't give a shit. I thought it was funny. Yeah, no, I, I like, once again, it, for entertainment's sake, it does totally work. I don't think it's it's perfect. I think there's a, a very small asterisk, but it is not a huge deal by any means. Yeah. But he does escape, and then he proceeds to go to the only place he could think to hopefully find uh, Hina. And that is the uh, shrine where she supposedly got her powers. Yep, you you have uh, a delightful little uh, uh not not quite a, a, a motorcycle, I suppose. I, it, it's a scooter. Yeah, a real fast scooter chase, uh, which which was real fun, really enjoyable. Meanwhile, you also get to see the little brother who uh, is being observed by a, a separate police officer, um, and who has allowed some uh, some visitors because he is awfully young. Yeah, he's he's young. It seems like he was just roped into things. So of course, uh, his, his the the girls we saw him with, uh, which seems to be his girlfriend and his ex, uh, they show up and they're happy to see him, uh, because he's a player, right? Uh, eventually, uh, and this is this is one of my favorite moments of the show. Not even necessarily for the little brother, but for the two girls. Because uh, one one girl's like, hey, I'm a little bit nervous. I need to go pee. So uh, the police officer goes and uh, helps out with that. And then uh, the one who I believe was his girlfriend was like, I can't believe you even had to bring your ex to help. All right, let's get changed. They switch clothes, grab a wig, uh, the whole thing. And it's just to sneak the little brother out of there so he can go help. And it, it's, it's once again, it's a little bit convoluted, but it was, it was such a good moment. Not even because like, oh, wow, the little brother. For me, it was just how much it built the character's of the other two girls, the fact that they were also willing and prepared and just ready to do that was phenomenal. He's such a playboy. I love him. Yeah, it, it, it was it was a phenomenal moment. I, I will say that it did feel like it did feel like the moments passed when uh, the cops started to take them into custody after uh, Hina was was taken up. And, and sacrificed, as it were. Uh, it did feel like it was the pacing got a little bit rushed uh, for for these few scenes uh, uh, up until uh, the tower. But once again, it wasn't terrible. It just wasn't as good. Uh, and I want to stress that. It's not that it was bad. It just quite it wasn't quite as good as the pacing that we had seen so far. It still worked. It still was thumbs up. Uh, it just felt a little bit off compared to the earlier stuff, which is understandable, especially when, once again, it's pushing two hours. Which is a long time for a film like this. Yeah. And they did use a lot of really good CG compositing as well. Oh, yeah. The the CG, some of the single best CG we have ever seen. There's a, a beautiful little fireworks scene uh, that has a lot of CG. And that was actually tremendously done. Like, it was gorgeous. Like, in the scenes where they used it, the compositing was seamless. You could barely tell unless you were really specifically looking for it like I was which is so good, and I'm so glad that CG is actually, you know, getting some real work and value because it means they can focus more on other things, yeah. which is great. CG is finally becoming not immediately cringeworthy every time that a show tries to use it, which is great. Yeah, there's still there's still a lot of it, but that's just because, you know, people, people don't have love in the world. That's the hard <laughs> thing. Uh, but, man, even with all of that, 
I still think that the, though the pacing was quicker at the end, I'm still cool with it. Oh yeah, 100%. Like I, like I said, it's not that it was terrible or even bad by any means. It's just that it was a little bit lesser compared to the amazing tier that everything else was on, including the rest of the pacing. So uh, eventually, eventually our protagonist goes to, uh, goes to the tower with the little shrine on top where he hopes he'll find Hina. And he, he starts going up the tower. Uh, the, the police are coming. They're on their way. Uh, he goes up, and, of course, who else does he meet except Suga? Uh, and Suga, which it's, it's not perfectly explained why Suga is there, but we're reaching the climax, and by now you're probably swept up in emotion sufficiently where it's not a huge issue for you. Yeah, no. uh, Similar to how the little brother will find this spot as well. The, the, they aren't really explained perfectly, but with the emotional climax as it is, you probably aren't going to be too worried about that. And I'm not. Keep going. <laughs> and so uh, Suga actually tries to, to stop him, tries... To uh, say, if you just go home, it will be okay. Uh, you won't be in trouble. I think that's what's best. Because Suga does really care for him. Yeah. Which is, which is nice. And especially Suga has his own experience with, with running away. And you can see sort of like some possible mixed emotions towards that reflected here. Uh, and, and hoping that maybe maybe he can provide a better life through this advice of just, just going back. Uh, but of course, who, who's going to listen to that? Of course you're not going to. You got girls to find. Uh, especially a uh, top tier wife who like Hina. Like, my God. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, eventually it, it gets nice and intense. And once again, for, for the second time in the whole movie, a gun is pulled. Which... Every time this gun shows up, my heart skipped a beat. I was, I, I'll be honest, I was real concerned that Suga was going to get shot. Same. I was so fucking scared. At the same time, uh, the cops show up. They're here now. They got guns, too. These things are going a little bit crazy. Let's just put it to you this way, Remington. If this was America, the story would have ended very differently. God bless America. <laughs> And so things start to get a little bit chaotic. Uh, eventually, our protagonist is overwhelmed by police officers. They're trying to to grab him. Suga decides, you know what? Fuck it. He pulls the police officers off, punches them. Uh, then our protagonist is stopped by uh, I, was it the police chief, I guess. Uh, a his partner, his detective partner. Yeah, they, they were like two detective partners. I yeah, guess. they're they're like the two main detectives. Uh, uh, and so uh, stopped by him. But then the little brother shows up in his girlfriend's clothes and and just pops over, uh, topples him over, and is like, "Go run! You better fucking save my sister. Uh, this is your fault." <laughs> yeah, fix this, dude. Yeah. Uh, so goes to the top where the temple is, goes in into it praying, and is successfully transported into the sort of surreal other world. Yeah, the higher plane of the sky, which is dope. Uh, we we won't go into too many details, but there's uh, a very nice, uh, dramatic and beautiful scene of of reuniting, right, um, and and bringing Hina back. Uh, which was which was touching. Uh, it was very pleasant. It didn't overstay its welcome. It wasn't extremely complicated. There wasn't a huge thing about like, but now how do we get back? No, it was like, let's. It'll work. Let's go. Yeah, let's yeet ourselves off the cloud and yeet themselves off the cloud. They did, uh, and so they do that. It's successful. Um, they eventually end up on on top, and then we skip forward a little while. Oh yes. Um and and there's there's a nice little graduation going on yep, because it's 3 years later. He had to go back. He had to go back uh because they were caught by the police. What are you going to do? And he was put on probation essentially. You can't come to Tokyo until you're an adult. Yeah. The soft ban on uh, Tokyo for you. How <laughs> yeah. you uh, feel? Uh and, and so uh, eventually he returns and Tokyo 
because he you know, came back, it's been raining ever since. It's been three years of rain. Tokyo has largely just flooded completely. Yeah. Uh, which, can, can you even imagine a world where where coastal cities or islands would become, would start flooding massively? What a ridiculous fantasy. I didn't, yeah, no, that, that could never, uh, guys, just don't drive as much. <laughs> God bless America. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but he he's able to to go back. We we see him visit a few of the other uh, people that we've seen, and it's it's pleasant. It's uh, very nice to see. Uh, but of course, what we really care about is is him visiting Hina, and eventually he does. He goes there, and. They reunite once again. And then the movie ends, and if you're not, you know, at least a little damp in the eyes, then you might not have a soul. (laughs) I have to say, one of my favorite moments throughout the entire movie, it comes as they're, uh, right after they've yeeted themselves off the cumulonimbus, and and he, he tells her, you don't have to be a sunshine girl. That's not what you have to do. You can do anything else. And there's plenty of different meanings and interpretations that people can derive from that. And I'm sure that they have. But uh, for me, I I interpreted it in a way similar to the saying, you don't need to set yourself on fire to bring others light. At the end of the day, you don't need to sacrifice yourself completely. Uh, And that doesn't mean you can't bring light to others but that doesn't need to be your one and only function. You can live your own life as well. Uh, and, and there's plenty of other more nuanced interpretations as well. Uh, but I think that one line is one of the single most impactful in the entire movie. And the and what makes everything better is the fact that in the movie, they specifically say that just because it's raining like this doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Yeah, they, they acknowledge... Uh, one important thing, they say that this is the decision that was made. And the thing that it's wildly reminiscent of uh, that you touched upon earlier yes. uh, is w- one of my favorite games, not necessarily for gameplay. It's it's a little bit teenagery. Uh, it, it's a little bit... Uh, melodramatic? A little bit melodramatic at times. But by God, if you won't give a shit at the end of it, it life is strange. Uh, yes, it is, Remington, but what's your point? <laughs> God damn it, Sean. So uh, the, the game Life is Strange, for those who don't know, you are it's a, about a girl named Max who learns how to control time, and she saves her former best friend, Chloe, from getting goddamn shot. And spoilers, Jesus. Uh, it's spoilers for, like, the first five minutes. Uh, if you start playing, which I would recommend. Yeah, it's, it's worth the 20 bucks. Uh, it, we're about to get into real big spoilers for it. So, like, if, if you've somehow watched the movie, but you haven't played the game, but you liked the movie, play the game. Because we're about to spoil that as well, so. Yeah, the second one, uh, give or take, it's up to you. Yeah, the uh, second one, don't worry about. Uh, the offshoot of the first one. Better than the second one. Not quite as good as the first one by many people's account, but still, I would argue, worthwhile. Uh, but, but nonetheless, super big spoilers coming up for Life is Strange. Go check it out. Go play it. Uh, because it has a very similar uh, little moral quandary. At the end, Max has been fucking with time for quite a while now, and she's had visions of this tremendous storm coming out and taking out completely... Uh, her her hometown, right? Yep. And it, it's super intense. Eventually it comes to happen and they think to themselves, well, maybe it's because I've fucked with the timeline too much and maybe it's because I've saved my best friend too many times. What do I do? Uh, and so you're, you're at that point given the option, do you save, well, do you, do you save your best friend and at this point possible lover uh, or let's face it, if if she's not the lover at that point, you made some questionable decisions. Yeah, and plus we gotta we gotta get that that sweet sweet uh what what's the phrase I used earlier? Yuri baiting. Yeah. We yeah, there we go. One. Some Yuri baiting. Uh, or you can you can go back, let her die, and hope that that will save your entire hometown. And guess what? The majority of people do. 
Uh, wait. Well, it's close to 50-50, but I'll be honest. If you don't choose to save Chloe, you're a goddamn monster. Agreed. Uh, I would also argue that that's a rational choice uh, and that there's no reason to believe that it'll actually save Arcadia Bay. But that's not for this podcast. I'll argue about that in the Discord. All mm. right. Uh, but nonetheless, it, it's very reminiscent, uh, especially if you make the right decision of uh, 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 of saving your, your now girlfriend. Because... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, to, for me, it, it always just creates a, a bit more of an interesting story. I, I wouldn't make the claim that it's necessarily the most moral one. And I think in Weathering With You, there's easy arguments to make that it's not the moral decision. A lot. You mean uh, getting a situation where thousands of people lose their homes and possibly their lives is not the most moral thing to do? It might not be. You could make an argument it is, but it would be quite an argument. Uh, but nonetheless, storytelling-wise and, and personal-wise, uh, it, it still impacts us. And we're still... It, it's fascinating to me that when watching the movie, this is still the happy ending for us. Because even though we're shown that there's a huge world and, uh, there's, and there's plenty of consequences with it, when we're watching the movie, what we care about are these two characters. And so to see that these two characters are okay, even if it's just because the lens that we saw the world through, that's sort of how humans see life generally. There are so many tragedies going on in the world that we just don't give a shit about because they're distant, they're far, they're not shown to us every moment. Whereas if our if our friend hurts themselves real badly or goes through a bad breakup, then we're affected emotionally by that. The the level of proximity and how that affects what's important, even if it's not necessarily the greatest magnitude, that's fascinating to me. Uh, and and that's not necessarily the main theme of this movie, but I would say it's it's definitely one of the underlying things to consider. With this movie. And consider everything that you've seen up to this point. It has a massive amount of weight to it. Would you sacrifice an entire city just to save the person you care about the most? Is there one life worth the lives of many or the livelihoods of others? It's a interesting moral question that we don't really get to think about too often. A lot of fantasy and high action shows will have... Yeah, think about it for a split second and then ultimately choose the uh, quote-unquote obvious one. Uh, very needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few type of thing. But it's very rare that we get something that explores the possibilities of the quote-unquote selfish option. Yeah, and, and I think that, uh, like, uh, another to, to use another video game example, this one I won't explore too much, uh, but it, it's also very prominent. Like The Last of Us, also a beautiful video game that if you haven't played, you really, really should uh, th this is just us starting off on on video games out of context. Yeah, no Little kidding. Did you know? Uh, yeah, you can keep an eye out for our Twitch channel. It's coming soon. <laughs> like, uh, favorite, subscribe, ring the bell, whatever. Hey, there we go. Uh, is this how is this how we sh shill ourselves out? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't watch much modern YouTube. Anymore. God, we're terrible at marketing generally. Yeah, but th the overall point we we could continue talking about different interpretations. If somehow you are one of the people who've listened to this, but you haven't watched it, you might not be able to go see it in theaters right now. But when it becomes available for you to watch, however that may be, I would strongly, I would strongly encourage you to go out and watch it however possible, because this show, it's very, very worthwhile. Yeah, and I will have, I have one final question for you before our usual question, Remington. Uh, the biggest criticism that I've read on from just browsing a couple different reviews of just writing this as an average movie, which I don't think it's an average movie by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, no, I would say definitely above average. Yeah. Uh, the biggest criticism most people have is that this is just, they say, they claim that it's just your name with a different coat of paint. And I, I disagree personally, but I was wondering what you thought about that. Uh, I can, I can understand that criticism. Uh, because there's a lot of similarities. That being said, I think there's a sufficient amount of differences that it still totally works out and is still totally okay. 
Uh, don't get me wrong. If if you didn't like your name, you, you you probably won't like this. If you saw your name and it definitely wasn't for you, there's enough similarities that while it's still possible, you probably aren't going to be super into this one. They are very strongly linked. They uh they definitely inform one another. I do not think that they are one in the same, but the similarities are there. Man, Remington, I'm glad that we got to go see this movie. I really am. I feel like it's improved my life for the better, even if just a little bit. And that is kind of why we watch things, isn't it? We want to watch something to be happy for a little bit and to have our emotions played with and expanded upon and gives us a new story and thing to talk about, which is why we do this show. And ultimately, Weathering With You is one of those movies that you should go see. And with that, Remington, I guess I have to ask, any chance you'd want to go watch Weathering With You uh, with me again sometimes? That's a weird sentence. <laughs> I, I would gladly do so, Sean, because I feel like there's a, a lot of little touches, little details, and interesting ideas that we haven't even been able to explore through a first watching. Fantastic. And with that... Thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Before we go, we do have a little bit of housekeeping that we have to do, though. Are we shoving this on Dylan again? And I, I am I am so happy to, to once again, just like last week, thank all of our, our beautiful patrons in my delightful, silky smooth voice that I've been practicing nonstop. Yeah, you're probably going to have to give Dylan some extra kind of bonuses in the future. Uh, they may be sexual. I don't know what he's into. <laughs> Starting off with our Yandere waifu tier, we have And Miles To Go, Sarah Birch, Kazu Muriko, Leos123, Cassidy Justin, Hayden Lecker, Anonymous Gamer, Rich Huffnagel, Ultimate5401, Uliana, Salty Pretzel, Glenn Michael Dolan, Jacob Livingston, Zarix, Wood, and Grant Firetype. Then, at our Boy Wizard tier, currently we have Brady Weinbarger, and our patron saint, Saint, is not the only individual in our Chef no Musco tier this month. We also have Almighty Sinner. Thank you guys so much. My name's Remington Chase, and I love big anime titties. So, uh, th there all of you guys are. We really sincerely uh, appreciate you, uh, especially, uh, especially Dylan. We also, we really appreciate Dylan, uh, which is completely random, because, 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 of course, I, I read those. Yeah, no, that was, uh, um, that was a flawless, buttery, silky smooth voice. I don't know why you don't do that for the whole podcast, honestly. Uh, it, 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 it just it hurts my throat a little bit. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, so, so I try, I try not to. Plus, uh, I, I, I think that when, when I do that voice, uh, it, it makes you so sexually aroused that it makes it difficult for you to focus, and I don't want to do that. To I you. am standing at half mast right now. It is a bit tricky. <laughs> but though we say thank you to all of our lovely patrons, I do have an alternative for you because money is hard to come by these days, as this movie clearly dictates. I mean, uh, yeah, one of the major themes is the struggle to find a job. Which, hey, we're podcasters. We can relate. <laughs> uh, but what you can do for us is you can leave a review on whatever platform you listen on, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, or if you really want to help us grow, word of mouth is the best way to do it. And if you would like to contact us directly, whether it is for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, then you can either tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter or send an email over onto AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in, and as always, don't fuck your sister. Don't fuck your sister.